This is Romans chapter 3 verse 3 But what if But what if some did not believe Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect God forbid Yea let God be true But every man a liar As it is written That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings And mightest overcome when thou judge Brakatai hawa Brakatai hawa shai Brakatai hawa Brakatai hawa shai which is Hebrew, interpret, bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this is going to be a real quick show. Um, spirit hit me with a, with a lesson Well, not so much more a bunch of precepts But just entitled, you know As I'm driving, just meditating, thinking And um, like I, you know Because you don't, you know, I'll just go right into it um, mm. If you don't, you know, if you think that you can uh, If you think that because you don't believe what comes out of the scriptures because you have you know her, you, you know you you believe in a false philosophy or you believe in uh whatever it is that you choose to believe and not the truth does that make an effect does that change the fact of the fact that the truth is going to come out and that the lord is going to judge the wicked can you change that because you don't believe I think not, man. And Paul said it best. Romans 3 and 3. I read again. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So you think you're going to change, you know, the Lord's judgment? Or it's not, or the Lord's judgment never is going to happen because you don't believe? You know, that's according to your feelings and your and your opinion. Which, which man opinion doesn't matter when it comes to the Heavenly Father and His Son. You know? It's this real, you know, the most high is, is uh, as the scriptures say, an austere man, a very serious man, okay? Power, he's a serious, I'm going to say he's a serious power. And the Lord require, you know, his chosen to follow after him. So if you're an Israelite, and I'm going to start with you, if you're an Israelite, you know, you're supposed to be following, well, especially, let me say this, you, if you're an Israelite from the seed of your father, you're supposed to be following Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, and if you're not following Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for whatever reason, because you don't believe, because you believe in something else, well, at the end of the day, the truth is going to reign over mm -hmm. any lies or any wickedness, man. So at the end of the day, the truth is going to come out, and the truth is going to judge you. Mm -hmm. You know. So it says, "For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect?" God forbid, yea, let the most high be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay, so, it says, for God forbid, yea, let the most high be true, and every man a liar. Of course, every man, okay, that lives accordingly to, men philosoph to man philosophies, false philosophies you're a liar if you're not coming uh, out of the source of the truth and out of the source of the governing power that rules the world which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai okay because that is his Hebrew name which the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ then you're a liar so let every man be a liar man that's why us here at Great Millstone start with our apostles you know we've been taught to just teach for the hopeful elect and not teach, you know, to win over the hearts of Israel, you know, to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native and Seminole Indians, you know, because we understand the scriptures. The scriptures say there's more that's going to perish than those that be saved. So the Lord had basically numbered it down to the ones that's going to be saved or delivered from the destruction. It's going to be his elect. Okay, 
but the multitude of his people, you're going to be judged. And the scripture tells you, and uh, I believe it's 2nd Edges 9, they must know it after death by pain. All right. So in order for you to get this truth, you have to die on this side. All right. And in the kingdom, you're going to be made perfect. But on this side, you're going to die for your for your wickedness and not just die. You're going to die of a grievous death because little do you know, the Bible is on point with the time that we're living in. And it's always been because this is the Lord's movie. You're not going to stop Esau for bringing in his new world order. What is the new world order? Mainly, the goal is to chip. The goal is the mark of the beast to chip everybody. So they can have, what, full control of the flesh. So that they can track you wherever you go. Because Esau wants to sit in the seat of the Most High. So with that being said, if you understand that or know anything of that, then you should know that the scriptures is telling the truth. You should know that the Most High have truly sent out his prophets to warn, to condemn, to reprove, to rebuke, and to exhort the governing power, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? So, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, meaning no. You're not going to change anything because you don't believe. What's going to happen is, the Most High is gonna come upon you suddenly, man. In a time when you, when you, um, when when you least expect. And um, I'm gonna get a quick precept there. Second Edges five and one. I think it's Second Edges. It might be Sirach. Sirach. Yeah, it's uh, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter five and one. It says, set thou heart upon thou goods and say not, I have enough for my life. F uh, follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. So if you live according to man, okay, men philosophies, whatever it is that, that, that brings pleasure to you, you know, which, which really going, what's bring, what's going to bring pleasure is wickedness, you know? It says, set not, set thou heart upon thou goods and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart and say not who shall control me for my works for the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. And that's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is coming with revenge, man. Revenge. Okay. First off, Yahweh Shai. Well, let me say the most high because for one thing, the Most High has a controversy right now with his people, man. The Most High destroyed his inheritance for a moment. But the Lord is going to redeem and bring back what he has chosen. Because the Most High, well, let me not keep saying the Most High because Yahweh is perfect. And if Yahweh is perfect and Yahweh Shai is perfect, that means that who he has chosen will be perfect too. And right now, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is angry man with his people ticked off but guess what it's okay because the lord had kept the remnant to himself all right which is how he's going to redeem the israelites and put us into rule over the over the other nations so it says and say not who shall control me for my works for the lord will surely revenge thou pride Say not, I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering; He will in no wise let thee go. So you could live your life according to how you feel. Do as thou will, and that is the quote from Alexander Crowley. All right, the son of Satan, which is Esau, Edom. Okay, counterpart of Satan, demon spiritual Satan. Those was his words. And these are, these are his sayings in which uh, a lot of celebrities live by. Do as thou will. And also, unknowingly, you sheep out there that follow these evil celebrities, that these devil worshipers, okay? You have, you have picked up, you know, that saying and made it a part of, you know, your everyday living. Do as thou will, okay? The Lord said he's going to revenge thou pride. 
and he says, what harm have happened unto me? Uh, it says, say not what I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me. That's somebody that doesn't believe. Okay. You're saying to yourself, I have, uh, say not I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me. You're saying that you didn't sin. Okay. And let me say this, only the Israelites can sin. Esau is just pure wicked and the most high is going to deal with him. Okay. You other nations, the most high never dealt with you. Nor if he ever never dealt with Esau or Edom. They're just wicked. But you Israelites, you know, if you don't believe, hey, it's okay. Just accept your fate. You know, when the Lord visits you. So it says, um, the Lord is long suffering, he will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propetition, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. And that reminds me of those in these government churches, man. These people uh, run around uh, with this plantation slavery doctrine, okay, that was pushed upon us in slavery from Esau. You run around here saying that the Lord is pacified of your sins because you believe that Jesus Christ, all right, which is really Serapis Christus, Cesare Borgia, you know, the, the false white hope. You believe that he died for your sins and that now you can do whatever it is that you like. Well, if you actually think about that, why would a man die for you so you could be released to do whatever it is that you choose to do. How is it that you can choose what's wrong and right? You have homosexuals that are not in the lead. Well, they're not, uh, they're not agreeing with pedosexual, a man and woman that desire a child that sexually desire a child. Here it is, a homosexual would disagree with a pedosexual. You know? Who are you to say what's wrong and right? Both of them are wrong. You know? But you will accept a transsexual, a man or a woman that believe they're the opposite sex. That's why, going back to Romans 3 and 3, I must read. It says, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let the most high be true, but every man a liar. This is why you're a liar, man. And, you, and your lying is going to lead to your death. All right? So let me get back to this real quick. It says, concerning propetition, be without fear to add sin unto sin, and say not his mercy is great. He will, he will be pacified for the multitudes of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Now here's the point. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance. Alright, so the Most High is going to meet you in your security, meaning when you're sitting down eating, when you think you're secured, you're in your house. When you think that everything is cool, everything is running, running well, you know, like running water, that's when the Most High gets you. The Most High is the master at revenge, okay? He knows how to hit you where it hurts. So, going back to the main topic, uh, well, the main point. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So it doesn't matter about your feelings, man. You know? So, brothers, newly fruit coming in, don't worry about how the ungodly and their feelings. We don't care about your feelings. This is why the Most High gives us that spirit to continue to teach because we don't care about your feelings. For men that care about blacks and Latino feelings and don't want to hurt, you know, they choose not to bring this topic out. They choose not to use rude words. Well, that's on them. But if you're teaching a lie, you're going to be destroyed. 
because what you're doing is holding back your sword. If you understand anything of the scriptures and you, under, you understand anything of the Bible, you should know that the prophets were sent out, all right, and they were rough. They spoke whatever it was that the Lord told them to speak, and it was going to bring trouble onto them. This is why you, you should know that the prophets, you know, dealt with, with a lot of trouble when they went out and prophesied. Jeremiah, Isaiah, you know, even and, and mainly from their own people. Yahweh Shai himself, all right, was put on a cross by his own people. Don't that remind you of Jake today killing their own people? You know, it was it was it was you Israelites, you you wicked Israelites, that said, uh, uh, "Let his blood be upon us and our children." So there you go, man. You know, so I ain't gonna make this too long. Uh, that 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 hit me. I didn't really have precepts, uh, but you know, those scriptures came out through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bashim, I was shy. I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, you can't change the truth because you don't believe. Or oh, because your feelings, because I feel like this, I feel like that. I feel like he he this or you that, whatever. Hey, at the end of the day, as um as is written in Ezekiel, then you shall know there was a prophet among you when these things come to pass. When martial law is declared, when they force the mark of the beast, when they declare World War Three, when it's sedition among men out here, anarchy, like you watching the movie Purge. When these prophecies of the scriptures come to pass, all right, because we're truly living in a time of revelation. Revelation is screaming, okay? And revelation, it means to what? Be revealed, you know? These prophecies that were written 2,000 years ago, okay? And even more than that, years ago, it's coming to pass because we're at the end of Esau. And um, I'll leave you with this one, you know, and, and like again, man, these scriptures, they repetitive. You know, we always come out with the same scriptures. And if you don't like it, then sorry, I can't help you then. You know, these scriptures is uh they, they come back out, man. And, and you brothers should know these scriptures because the script the 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 uh the scriptures say knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. Alright, so I just want to read this real quick. Uh, second Edges chapter 6 and 6 it says then I considered these things and they were all made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other now that's the most high that's Yahweh he said what he said he said then did I consider these things what did he consider the beginning and the end he spoke the end in the very beginning so we're living in a book. We're living in a movie. We're living in the Bible, if you didn't know. We're living prophecy. This time frame, 2019, Esau, Edom is ruling the world. We're living in the book. We're still in it. It's not over yet. We're living Bible prophecy. This is, the world is still in Bible prophecy. All right? It says, then did I consider these things and they were all made through me alone. So Yahweh is taking all the credit for it. And he has every right to because we are of him. We don't exist. Okay, unless he exists because he thought us into existence, man. All right. This is why you're supposed to uh, give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, because if he didn't exist you don't exist there's no way in hell that you can tell me that the sun the moon the stars and we and, and the earth the water the plants and all of you know you let Esau tell it we just kind of evolved into all of this how is the sun rising every morning how is the moon is a light at the night all right how are the animals are in order? How are the birds are in order? Without, without there being a, a governing power to govern everything and set things in order. The only ones that's not in order are the Israelites. Even the heathens are in order. Anyway, it says, 
and through none other by me also they shall be ended and none other so Esau you're not going to get an extension on your kingdom you're not going to create this new world for us to live in as transhumans you know all of us having the mark of the beast the chip this utopia this fantasy of yours the Lord says then did I consider these things and they were all made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other we're on the Lord's time the Lord is time if you didn't know verse 7 then answered I which was Edris and said what shall be the part in the sunder of the times so Edris is asking okay when is the split when is when is this the beginning all right we know the beginning but when is when is going to be the end that's what basically what Edris is asking the Lord he says then answered I and said what shall be the part in the sunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth that's a good question. Perfect question, man. All right. Verse eight. And he said unto me from now, this is the Lord. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. So what does Esau and what does Jacob and Esau has to do with the beginning and the end? That should lead you to know. That the Most High made this story, well, this book about the righteous versus the wicked. Okay? Just like you see in every movie, you know? Every movie, well, I'm going to say every good movie, you will see a bad guy and you see a good guy. And when you go to the movie theaters or you watching at home the movie, and, and your conscience, you want the... You want the good guy to win at the very end. So what they do, they have the good guy getting beat up. The good guy is good at first. Then he gets done wrong. Then he gets beat up. You know, this is the whole movie. Then he gets beat up. Then he tries to uh, persevere. Then he falls. But at the very end, he overcomes the wicked one. And then when you leave the movie theater or watch that mo or finish watching that movie, you go... Yo, that was a good-ass movie, yo. Damn, yo, that shit was good. I like that. All right, now flip it. If you watching a movie like that in same same scenario, and then at the end, the bad guy end up killing the, 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 the righteous, the innocent, and then it goes off, you're not going to like the movie. You're going to be mad. You're going to say this movie was a waste of time. That movie sucks. I hated the ending. Well, how much more Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man? All right? Because the righteous is Jacob and the wicked is Esau. That's all it is. This is why we say this is a movie, but it's reality. This is the Lord's movie. Because it is. It says, um, Then answered and I said, What shall be parting of the sun, the sunder of the times, and shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And that goes back to Jacob and Esau's story. All right. When they were born, Esau came out first, red, and Jacob held on to his hill. They were twin brothers. He held on to his hill when Esau was coming out of the womb. And that was symbolically that Jacob was going to take Esau out of power. That's why the Lord is making mention here in Second Edges. He's letting Edges know, uh, uh, symbolically, Jacob is going to take Esau out of power. So if you want to know the end, you want to tell time and what season you're living in, Esau must be ruling at the very end. It says, um, Verse 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right, so Esau is ruling. This is why we understand why Esau Edom don't want to be called Esau. Uh, he got his minions out there. He got dumb idiots, scoffers that want to change the fact of that the so-called white man is Esau and want you to think that they're Japheth and this and that and Ishmael or whatever. 
you know, because they don't want to meet this fate. They don't want to meet this destiny of theirs, which is destruction, you know. But guess what? You can go around and say whatever you want to say. At the end of the day, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. It does not matter about your feelings and emotion. What matters is what the Lord said. You know, so I hope this lesson was uh, enlightened to those of the hopeful elect because that's what we do these shows for. And um, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.